like I was just saying, we the last time we did a review of when you have polynomials, basically fractions of polynomials in what we do. And almost every time, the very final step is factor and cancel, and that's what we're doing. When we had fractions in fractions, something like this, I'm just basically going over what we did last time. We have something like this, and how about uh, E over B plus, how about F over A? Then the name of the game was kill denominators, right? And we said, well, if we could just kill each one of these denominators, and the way we did that was we said, well, there's this nifty trick with fractions is that you could change, a, you could rewrite a fraction by multiplying it by one, right? And it doesn't change the fraction. But then we said that if you find a tricky way of writing one, which is any number over itself, right? So like if I have a seven over a seven, or an eight over an eight, then that's, then we can multiply this thing by this thing and it stays the same and everybody's happy. And so, just a brief review. It, is that a, that's an F, right? That's an F, yes. Okay. That is an F. Thank so, you. So, in order to kill all of these denominators, and that's the name of the game here, what would I need to multiply by to kill each one of the every single denominator that you see? Um, uh, wait. Okay. You would have to multiply by the. Um, so one step at a time. What do I need to multiply to kill this denominator here? B. B. Okay. So if I do it on the top, I gotta do it on the bottom, right? Uh -huh. What about D? This? D. Do it on the top, gotta do it on the bottom. What a. about this guy? And then A, yeah. So I need an A here, which means I need an A here. That guy's already taken uh -huh. care of, right? So I don't need to go any further. Okay, so this is this is just review, right? And then we would see that this thing jumps over, goes into the numerator, the B's would cancel, right? This guy jumps over, goes into the numerator, the D's would cancel. Ditto here, this guy jumps over, goes into the numerator, goes into the numerator. And I'm just gonna jump to the chase because this is just review. Um, let's see. The B's would cancel. I would have two A's in the top and one D. So I would have A squared D left over in the top. Over here, the D's would cancel. And what would I be left with when this guy mm -hmm. jumps in? Um, <coughs> C, uh, D, A. Uh, I think the D's are dead. Oh, right, CBA. CBA, there we go. And then, okay, so last two, we're just, this is just an exercise to get our brains warm again. Um, this guy jumps in and what's left over? EDA. EDA, EDA, yes, because the Bs have canceled. Finally, this guy jumps over and what are we left with? FBD. F. The D because the A's have canceled. And then, and we're imagining that these are polynomials, right? Like instead of A over B, maybe I had X plus one over X minus two, something like that. And that those are the factors that I'm trying to cancel out. Turn into something a bit more simple. Factor any way that I can and cancel, simplify. And that's the name of the game. And what we do. <clears throat> We used this nifty fact that I could take a fraction and multiply both sides under both 
think about sides of a fraction, right? Like the numerator and denominator. And as long as I multiply both sides of that fraction by the same thing, it doesn't change the fraction. Well, yeah, fraction. So similarly, and we've already seen this before with when we have equations is if I, in fact, yeah, okay, we'll start it like this. Yeah, if I have something like this, whatever I do to one side of the equation, as long as I do it to the other side of the equation, then that's perfectly fine, right? Like I could multiply this equate both sides of this equation by the same thing and it stays true. For instance, if I said, okay, I multiplied this side by a seven, as long as I multiply this side by a seven, I still have a true equation. I'm still good to go. Similarly, I could say, well, what happens if I multiply both sides by, oh, I don't know, one half. Let's do that. What's one half times two? Uh, one. One, right? Because that's the whole reason that's why I chose that one, right? Is like you have something in the numerator, something in the denominator, you have a two over two. Those cancel out. That's how we think about this. And you get X. What's one half times four? Two. Two, okay. And so this is nothing new. We should be, we should be comfortable with this, that if we have an equation, as long as you multiply both sides of the equation by the same thing, you end up with another true equation. Or if you're smart about it, you can multiply it by something that's going to get that X by itself so that you could solve the equation. And we can see that this indeed is a solution to this original equation. If you plug in two for X, you get two times two, which does in fact equal four. But you can see the similarity of what we're doing here, right? Two sides of an equation, you multiply by the same thing. You have two sides of a fraction, you multiply by the same thing in order to change it into a form that makes it easier for you. So that's what we're going, that's what we're going to do finally to kind of finish this guy up. Only our equations are going to involve fractions. And so if I had something, oh, let's say like this, what would you do to, you just tell me, what would you do to solve this? Uh, I would multiply by two. Right, and you would multiply both sides of the equation by two, right? right? And so again, this is the exact same principle mm -hmm. because it's like, when we saw this originally, it's like, and this is how I think about it. Like I see denominators, I see fractions, and I think I need to get rid of those. I need to kill those denominators. So the same thing is here. It's like, well, I know how to deal with fractions of polynomials, except for those damned denominators down there. If I could just kill the denominators, I'd be in a, I'd be in a good, good shape. Same thing here. I have some kind of equation with a denominator. And so reflexively, we think, let's kill that denominator and see what happens. You do that, you told me to multiply by two, that cancels that guy. We get x equals three times two, which is six. This is a small space, so you and indeed, I can see that if I plug that back into my original equation, six divided by two is indeed three. And so that's, there you go. That's, that's what we're going to do. Only now it's going to get a little bit more difficult. We're going to have, this, you've been doing this kind of stuff for years now, right? And in everything you've done thus far, the variable or the thing that you're trying to solve for, in this case, x, has always been in the numerator. Well, now what do we do if x is in the denominator? So let's, in fact, use this almost exactly the same thing. 6 divided by x equals 3. And in this case, we've just done this one, right? <laughs> like, we know that, well, and you can just say, well, what number divided by what? Take six, divide by a number, you get three, you know it has to be two. But 
let's say it, that's not going to give us a method of doing it, right? What did we do last time? We had x over 2 equals 3. And what did we do to both sides? We multiplied them both by um, 2. By 2. In other words, we took whatever was in the denominator and multiplied by it. Sound familiar, right? Like this is the same game that we've been mm -hmm. playing for, for the last few sections is we have something in the denominator. We need to kill it to turn it into something I've seen before. Same thing's going on here. We have something in the denominator. How do we kill this denominator? Uh, we multiply it by x. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by x, and let's see what happens. I do that. OK. That x cancels that. That was my whole reason for doing this in the first place, is that the x's cancel, and I'm left with 6 equals 3x. And now if we wanted to solve this, finally, what would we do? Uh, you would multiply. No, you would divide by 3. Divide by both sides. You could also think uh, multiply by one third. It means exactly the same thing. But yes, this is how I actually think about it. Divide both sides by three. That leaves me with an X on this side by himself. And what's over here? Two. Six divided by three is indeed two. And I'm going to go back to my original equation. This is key here. And we're going to see this, why this is the case in just a second. Now, I have to go back and check that when I plug this guy in, nothing crazy happens. And I can see that when I take this, I take x equals 2. If I replaced this x with 2, in other words, plugged it in, I would have 6 over 2. No problems there. That's a perfectly legal thing to do. We could do that. Nice. 6 divided by 2 is indeed equal to 3. And so I can see, yeah, I. That is a that is the solution to this equation. Everything making sense so far? Uh huh. Okay. Now, moving on. This is where things get a little tricky. So let's do this example. We have x minus seven over x minus nine is equal to 2 over x minus 9. So let's stop for a second. I'm going to go through my thought process when I see something like this. I, I see I have an equation, and it's understood what you're trying to do is solve for x. So I have an equation involving x, and there are fractions. Uh-oh, there's denominators. I want to kill denominator say it with me i want to hear i want to hear you say this at least 20 times today what no. i have denominators what do i want to do kill them say it kill denominators kill denominators kill denominators okay so what do i need to do to kill all of these denominators what do i multiply by in order to kill those guys x minus nine x minus nine right and so what and I'm going to suggest that you <clears throat> go to take this step. You use parentheses because parentheses are our best friend in this class. And these, these are going to get uglier and uglier. And if you get into the habit right now of saying, OK, put parentheses around these guys, that will help you in the future. So OK, we want to multiply by, you just told me, x minus 9. And I'm thinking about that as a quantity that I'm also going to put in parentheses. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I got to do to the other side of the equation, x minus 9. OK. Now what happens? Well, the whole reason we did this was to kill denominators. The reason we did this was to what? Kill denominators. Kill denominators, right? And so this denominator is dead. Mm. We have killed it. The x minus 9 cancels that x minus 9. And I'm left with just a plain old 2. What am I left with on the left-hand side? For me. Uh, X minus seven. X minus seven, because I'm thinking about that. And this is another good thing to do is thinking about every one of these is also in its parentheses. This will 
You'll see why we want to think about that that way in just a second. But the x minus nine kills the x minus nine. I am left with x minus seven. Now you tell me what to do because we're trying to solve for x. What do I need to do? Uh, you can add seven to both sides. Mm -hmm. Giving me what? Um, <coughs> x equals nine. X equals nine. And at this point you go, okay, I'm good. I'm moving on to the next problem. No, do not do that. We have to check our original equation. And I don't mean to check everything and see if it, if, if it does work out, like check your answer. This is something new. This is something we haven't encountered before. We have to check to see if our solution makes sense in the first place. Because what happens here, I'm gonna erase our work here and just look at the original equation. And in every case in your homework and for the rest of your life, that's what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to go back to the very original thing that you had, the way it was written. I'm gonna say that one more time because it's so important. You have to go back to the original thing you had, the way that it was written. You'll see why I'm making a big fuss about this in a minute. The way it was written, and then try to plug that number in. What happens when I plug in a nine for X? You get a zero? In the denominator, no less. Right, and can we, can we divide by zero? No. No, we cannot. So in your homework and for the rest of your life, when you're doing these types of problems, you might get multiple answers. And you could imagine like we have been with like quadratic equations, we get multiple answers, right? Like we get a two and a negative two or a positive three and a negative five or something like that. And what we have to do is take every one of our answers and plug them in to see if you get division by zero. In this case, we get division by zero. And so we, x, <coughs> x equals nine is not a solution. Now it's a solution to the second thing we got once we went ahead and multiplied and did our canceling. Like, yeah, it's that is a solution to this equation, but not to our original equation because we get that division by zero, which is not defined and we are not going to do it in this class. And so we are going to say for this one, if I told you to solve for X, you are going to say no solution. Alternately, this and this is going to mesh more with what we're going to be doing from here on out. Like I just said, we're going to be doing equations that have multiple answers, right? That's, that we're going to have multiple solutions. Just real quick, you don't need to write this down because you've seen this before. But if we had something like this, x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0, and I asked you for the solution to that, you would say, well, the only thing I know how to do with a quadratic equation is get it equal to zero, check, and then factor this guy out. And so I would factor him out and I would get zero. And I would say, well, x squared, you have to have an x and an x here. With a two, you have to have a one and a two. That's the only way around that. And then with a minus three here, this would have to be a minus and a minus. Okay, so then, the solution to this equation would be what? What, I get two of them. What are they? X equals what and X equals what? X equals one and X equals two. There you go. And what we've been doing up until now is we've just been writing it like this. And that's been our thing. What I'm gonna do, what we wanna start doing right now is write that X is in the solution set. If you remember this nifty little thing, that means X is in, the solution set one and two. Okay, so that is what I will be looking for when you have multiple solutions from now on. If I say, if I give you this and say solve for x, I'm looking for this thing right here. So in this case, if there's no solution, we'd say, well, the solution set 
for this equation right here is empty. There is no solution. And we just do an empty set. It means there is no number that you could put in that set, which makes this guy true. The solution set is empty. There is no solution. It means the same. That all means the same thing. Follow? Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So it's a little nitpicky, but this is going to mesh well when you go on in math. This is what's going to be expected. So we might as well just go ahead and knock that out now, especially because we're doing what we're doing right now. The only real new thing is I'm in introducing the empty set, and it's just a fancy way of saying that there's no solution. So, okay. Okay. Okay, so what we just found out was that even if you go and you go through and solve an equation and you get an answer, it might not actually work. Because if you try to plug it in, in our case, x was equal to nine, and you can't do that the way this is written. And so we are going to have to do that with every single thing that we do with rational, with equations, with rational polynomials. So, um, here we go. Let's do, we're going to do some examples. Uh, this is number 12 from, this is all from page 269. And this is number 12. And we have three over y plus one equals two over y minus three. Okay, let's just talk this out. We have an equation, oh, and of course we're solving for y. That should be understood. <laughs> Solve this for y, okay. <laughs> I have an equation <laughs> with one variable. Uh-oh, uh I have denominators. What do I wanna do, Kayla? Cancel them, kill them. Kill, uh, kill yeah. the denominators, kill them. Okay, so how do I go about killing these denominators? I'm gonna have to multiply both sides of the equation by something. What do I need to multiply it by? Um, some things in this case. You'll need to multiply them by, uh, y and first off, since you're thinking about this too hard, what? Mm -hmm. How do I kill this thing right here? What do I need to multiply by y plus one? Y plus one, right? And this is how we're going to be thinking about these things. Like, mm -hmm. is that this is some term in the denominator, whatever that term is. It happens to be a y plus one, and I'm thinking about it in parentheses as y plus one. Well, I don't really need to use my brain, just say in order to kill that, the only way to kill that thing is to multiply the top by it. So I have a y plus one. Note that I'm using parentheses when I'm writing. What's the thing, the only thing that's going to kill this guy right here, the y minus three? Y minus three. Y minus three. And I'm going to think about him in parentheses, so y minus three. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I got to do to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and write it like this. Y plus one, y minus three, just like that. Okay. Now, this cancels out, right? The y, and that's why we did it in the first place. If, you, if you're if you not canceling something out, you probably did something wrong, right? That's the whole idea was to kill this denominator. And I could see that this y plus one cancels this y plus one. And I'm left with a, I like to write my regular old numbers out first, three times y minus three. Parentheses are your best friend here, right? We're imagining that what we've done is we've taken this thing, multiplied it in the top, which is three y plus one, y minus three, <coughs> all divided by the quantity y plus one. The y plus ones have canceled out and I'm left with just this right there. You following that? 
Uh -huh. Okay, so that's what we did over there and we're left with that. That equals, you tell me what to write on the right-hand side of the equation. Um, two times the y plus one. Two times the y plus one. Why is that? Well, because the whole reason we put this guy there in the first place was to kill that guy. Now we've killed him. Those guys have canceled. We're left with the two times y plus one. And in this case, we didn't really need to think about this as being in parentheses, but whatever's in the numerator, it's going to get more complicated in a couple minutes here. We need to think about that as being in parentheses. You have something up there being multiplied by this, and that's how they come together. Um, we'll see that in just a second. Okay, now what do we do? We're trying to uh, simplify. So you simplify them. Okay. So you get three y minus nine. Equals, equals 2y plus 2. 2y plus 2. Perfect. Perfect. And now what do you want to do? How do you want to go about doing it? Um, I suppose you can subtract 2y from each side and then add 9 to each side. There we go. Minus 2y from both sides. Add 9 to both sides. The 2y's are gone. I'm left with 1y on the left. The nines are gone. I am left now with a two plus nine is nine, 11. Y is equal to 11. Okay. Am I done? No. No. What do I have to do? Check. I need to check. And what you're going to notice is I'm not checking, like I'm not going to plug in 11 and make sure that everything works. All I'm going to do is just make sure that I haven't divided by zero. That's really the only name of the game here. Now, if you want, you could plug in 11 and actually do the calculations on both sides to make sure that they work. But that's not necessary unless you really want to check your work. So I'm going back to the original equation as written, which is this right here. And I'm just going to imagine that I plug in an 11 right there. What do I get in the denominator of y is equal to 11? Um, 11 plus one is 12. 12, can we divide by 12? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what if I plug it in there, what do I get? Um, that's nine of 50, so eight. eight. Something like that, yeah, eight. <laughs> I think. Can we divide by eight? Yes. Yeah, no problem there, okay? So then the solution is indeed y equals 11. We are good to go, check. You could write it like that. We don't need any kind of crazy set notation. When it's only one solution, we're just gonna write it like that. And that is good. If this were on a quiz or a test, I would suggest if you have time that is to actually plug it in and, and just check your work like the full, do the full nine yards, right? Plug in 11 and make sure that this does indeed equal that. Um, <laughs> But um, it's not necessary to do, but what is necessary with these, and I'm going to say this a hundred more times, is that anytime you have variables in the denominator and you have a solution for one of those variables, you had better go back and check that you don't get division by zero. So we good to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Let's jump to this one. Let's do, care about that. I want to do this one here. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is number 20. And it is. 50 over y, that is five zero over y. Minus 50 over y minus two equals four over y. Okay, we want to solve for y. I see fractions, uh-oh, I see denominators in an equation what do I want to do? Kill them. 
kill denominators. All right, it's our new mantra. All right, we're going to say that as much as possible. So, what I'm going to do is put parentheses around the entire left hand side here and the entire right hand side. Now, I'm going to think, okay, what do I need to multiply by to kill each one of these guys? What's going to do it? Um, multiply by y minus 2, I think. Uh-huh, y minus 2. That's definitely going to kill that guy. How do we kill that guy? You multiply by y. By y. Y also has to show up there. Okay. Notice I am not going to multiply these guys all together and write this as y squared minus 2y because that's going to be hard to see what I do. Like when this jumps over and then we have four times this over y, well, now I just made my life harder. But if I wrote it like this, it makes my life very easy because I can see, oh, yeah, the y and the y cancels and I can see what's left over. Long story short, whatever you're multiplying both sides by, leave it in its factored form, and that will make your life easy. So we have a y and a y minus 2. Okay, let's do the right-hand side first. What's left over when that guy jumps in and we do our canceling? Uh, 4 times y minus 2. Yes, 4 times the quantity y minus 2. Parentheses are your best friend. Now, what happens over here? Mm, you get 50 times y minus 2. Yeah, because this guy has jumped over and hit the numerator, and we have all that junk in the numerator with 50. The y's cancel, and just like you told me, we have 50 times y minus 2 is the only thing that's left over right there. What about in the second case? What happens? Minus 50y minus 50y is all that's left over because the y and the y minus 2 came over. <laughs> y minus 2 is canceled, and we're just left with a 50 and a y in the numerator. OK. Now what do you want to do? You can multiply the 50 mm -hmm. and the 4. So okay. simplify. Yes, simplifying by doing that. So the 50 comes in, and what do I, what do I have over here? 50y uh, minus 100. Minus 100. And then we still have this minus 50y over here. OK, what do I have on my right-hand side? 4y minus 8. Good, 4y minus 8. OK, What's really nice is I notice something big just cancels out right there. So, so 50y minus the 50y is gone. How sweet is that? It's almost as though somebody made this problem up to make it like that. OK, now, uh, then what do we have left? What do you want to do? Um, we have a negative 100 equals 4y minus 8. So you can add 8 to both sides and then divide by 4. Exactly. That's exactly what I would do. We would have 4y equals minus 100 plus 8 is minus 92. Nine. Two, and then you already jumped ahead and said, you know what, then you're going to divide by four, which is absolutely right. What's well, negative 92 divided by four? I don't know. I don't know either. Let's do it. 92 divided by four. How many times does four go into nine? Two. Two times four is? Eight. Nine minus eight is? One. Drop the two. How many times does four go into 12? Those three. And so 23. So this must come out to negative 23. So negative 23 equals y. OK, are we done? Uh, no, we have to oh. make sure that we're not dividing by 0. Exactly. And so I'm going to look back at my original equation, the way it was written. Looking back. Can I plug in a negative 23 here? Yes. Can I plug in a negative 23 here? Yeah. All right, we're done because we've already figured that one out, right? And okay, we're good to go. 
Uh, that would be my answer. That is what we are looking for. Y equals negative 23. And if you want to go above and beyond, you could plug it in and make sure that both sides of the equation work. But that's not necessary. What is necessary is that we check that we don't have division by zero. Because as we saw, like the first example that I did, we actually did have a way that you could get a perfectly good answer. And you're like, oh, yeah, x equals 9. Obviously, x has to equal 9. Yeah. And then you plug it in and see, oh no, it can't equal nine. So that is a necessary step for every one of these guys. Okay. Um, we are going to do number 24. This one's a little tricky. Oh man, my black is dying. Tell me if you can see green. Is that coming through? Yeah. You, you see that? Okay, cool. Okay, so number 24 is where's a little bit of space. Three over y minus two. Y minus two plus two y over four minus y squared. Ooh. Uh -oh. Equals. Uh. Five over y plus two. Okay, so solve for y. I look at this equation mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, I have denominators. What do I want to do? Multiply, uh, kill the denominators. Kill denominators, thank you. I, I want to hear Sorry. it at least 20 times. I want to hear it at least. <laughs> okay, so now this is interesting. This is interesting because I have, I could see, okay, I have a y plus two, so I'm going to have to multiply by y plus two. I have a y minus two, I'm going to have to multiply by y minus two. And then I have this. This is a difference of squares, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can rewrite this, right? What is this? You have a uh, minus a square is equal to something times something. Yeah, it's then um, two yeah. plus y times two minus y. Right? Exactly. Good job. I'm so, so glad that after Christmas break, you remembered that. That's excellent. Good job. And what with COVID and everything, <laughs> I'm impressed. Good job. So now here's the thing though. Now, as I look at this and I'm thinking, okay, I factored this guy down. Now, one thing I didn't say explicitly is one of the steps we wanna take is to factor all of your denominators out. And it's, it's kind of implicit in that idea, like, well, if I'm trying to kill denominators, I can make my life easier by factoring what's down there so that I don't go like overboard, right? It's kind of like if you have the denominators uh, five and two and say 10, you could say, oh, I have to multiply by five times two times 10. It's like, no, 10 will take care of all of it. You don't need to worry. And so what, what you do in your mind is you say, ah, that's because 10 is equal to two times five. And so you've really gone ahead and factored that denominator out. The same kind of thing here. We don't want to go overboard and say, well, I have to multiply by y minus two. I have to multiply by four minus y squared. And I have to multiply by y plus two. That would be overkill. The same way that it would be overkill to multiply this guy by more than you need to, right? So, but the tricky thing about this equation is that the way it's written is four minus y. Now, if I were to replace this four minus y squared with these, these look nothing like these guys here. So there was a trick that we did to flip these guys around. Do you remember what trick that was? Oh yeah, you subtract it and then you put the sign the other way and Mm -hmm, exactly. And, and yeah. what, what we were doing explicitly is we were saying, if you have a minus b, 
That is the same thing as factoring out a negative. And so you factored out a negative. You have negative A plus B, right? And we could just see that. Take a negative one and multiply it by negative one. It's it positive. The negative one multiplied by the positive B makes it negative. That's exactly the same thing as that. And so then what we do is we just rewrite it and say minus B minus A. So cut into the chase, like you just said, you make the outside negative and then you flip the order. And so that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to make this, I'm going to flip the order, but make it negative. So negative Y squared minus four right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write that. And we've seen this before. Just jump to the chase and flip that sign right there. Since it's plus, well, if I make that negative, it would be the same as rewriting that as negative. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to rewrite all of this this way. 3y minus 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip this for right now. Come back to them in a minute and get the rest of it written out. Y uh, plus two, here we go, plus two. So I'm just looking at that and I know my trick, right? Because I'm gonna take an extra second and ramble like I do, but I, I think it's good to just walk through the train of thought. I have an equation involving polynomials, rational polynomials. I know I want to kill the denominators. Then I look at this thing and see, uh-oh, you know, this could be a lot really complicated because I would have a two minus y, a two plus, yeah. neither of those things. Ah, but if I were to flip this order, this would factor down into something that I already have. So I'm going to take that step. I'm going to reverse this order, giving me a y squared minus four, but then I'm going to pull out a negative. And since this sign was positive, I pull it out and it becomes negative. That looks good. So now we could factor this guy. What does this guy factor into? Y plus two times Y minus two. There we go. And almost all of these problems, when you have multiple factors like this, they will do something similar. In other words, you could get a hint of how to factor something by looking at the other factors that are in your denominators. It's like, well, life might be really easy if this thing factors into this thing and possibly that thing. And so indeed that is the case that what happens here, y plus two, y minus two. Okay, now I see, aha, that it would have been overkill to multiply by this and this and this because this middle one factored into those two very factors that I have. So now I'm going to kill denominators using parentheses. What do I need to multiply to kill every one of these denominators? Uh, y plus two and y minus two. Right. And we don't need any more. That is all we need to worry about right now. So I'm going to do that on this side. I'm going to do it on that side. Y plus two, Y minus two. Okay, so this guy jumps in and what happens with the first term? What am I left with? Um, was... Hold on one second. Okay. Sorry, just writing it down. No, no problem, no problem. Um, okay, the first term, you get three times y plus two. Three times y plus two. Okay, and now in the second one, what happens? You get minus two y. Minus two y is all that's left over because we didn't go overkill and bring in a bunch of stuff we didn't need to. It just killed that denominator, we're done. What about on the right-hand side, what's left over? You get five minus uh, five times y minus two. Five minus two. 
Okay, let's finish this up. I'm going to need some room. So I'm going to erase this middle part right here. I want to keep my original equation because like I said, we need to double check there in the end. So now we need to make this look nicer. What do we want to do? Uh, you get three Y plus six minus two Y equals Five y minus ten. Good. Okay. And now we are continuing to make this look simpler and simpler. What do we have? Tell me what. To do, however you want to do it. Um. Well, you get three y minus two y, so you have y plus six equals five y minus ten. Yep. And then you can, I guess add 10 to both sides and then subtract y from the left side and yeah added, both sides added 10 to both sides and you said subtract the y to bring this guy over here that looks good and now what do we do um you simplify oh 16 equals y and then you divide by four divide by four and i'm left with what y equals um, four. Y equals four. Am I done? No. No! What do we need to do? Let's see. Make sure that the denominator does not um, equal zero. There you go. So when I plug in a Y into this first one, when I plug in a four, am I good? Yeah. Am I good here? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because four minus four squared is four minus 16. No problems there. Am I good here? Um, yeah. Yeah, because four plus two is six, no problems there. So we are good to go. That is how we deal with that. I wanted to go through this one, uh, one because that's, that's it's, it's tricky, right? Um, also, like it, it, it introduces the idea, like, in order to kill denominators, which is the name of this game from now on, we are killing denominators, it behooves us to factor those denominators. And so although I didn't say it as, a, as an explicit step in what we're doing, it's implied that your life will be much easier if you take your denominators and factor them out completely. Now, if you just do this blindly, right, and, and I'm gonna take just a second here, to show you why you don't want to just do this blindly. If you just have it in your head, like, oh, I need to factor my denominators before I do anything else, well, then you'd end up with this. You'd say, well, 3y minus 2 plus 2y. Ah, this factors as 2 minus y, 2 plus y. That equals 5 over y plus 2. And then you say to yourself, kill denominators. And you've already forgotten about what's going on here. You're going to say, oh, um, Ooh, boy, what do I need to do to kill every denominator? I guess I need a y minus 2, and I need a 2 minus y, and I need a 2 plus y, and I need from over here a y plus 2, and you're going to plug and plug and plug and go and go and go, and it's going to be a real pain. With each one of these, when you're doing these, you need to stop and take a second and go, wait a minute. Can I do something common here, right? And when I write it like this, I don't see a commonality between these guys. But that's anytime you have something like this, it's almost guaranteed that in this book, they're going to give you one that's just like this. It's written in a funky way, but you could rearrange it to make your life easier. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps if they, here's another one like, if you had something like this and one of your denominators would say 3y plus 6, and you had something like that, and you go, oh, man, I'm going to need to multiply by. Well, wait a second. If I factor this guy out, I could say this is the same thing as a 3 and how about a y plus 2. And then you see, oh, yeah, I already had one of those. He was just in disguise. If I factor this guy out completely, then I already have that y plus 2. Does that make sense what I'm getting at here? Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to think 
like we need to blindly factor all my denominators. Well, yeah, you need to factor all your denominators just because it's going to make your life easier, but don't lose sight of the bigger picture. And when you see something like this, you should be thinking, how is this related to this? Because I guarantee in every one of these problems, there's some relationship there. So, okay, we good to go? Moving on? Uh -huh. Moving to our last topic here. Okay, last topic. This is going to look familiar. Um, we have x squared minus 4. And we have, how about an f? equals x about minus 2. Okay, I see something like that. And let's say we're trying to solve for x. We're given something like this and it says solve for x. And so you see that you have denominators. What do we want to do? Uh, kill them. Kill denominators. Okay, so we're going to kill denominators. So what do I have to do? What do I need to multiply by, both sides by in order to kill those denominators? Um, x plus 2. X plus 2. So I'm going to take x plus 2 and multiply both sides. Note that I'm using parentheses. Use parentheses are your best friend. Use them, use them, use them, use them. What happens on the left-hand side? What am I left with? Um, <coughs> x plus 2 times x squared minus 4. Wait a second. What? We're trying yeah. to, that kills that, and what am I, what am I left with? Oh, x squared minus four. X squared minus four. That was the whole point, was to, just to kill that denominator. That's why I chose x plus two in the first place, okay? Now, on the right-hand side, well, there was no denominator to kill. I guess I'll just write it like this. Okay. That looked familiar. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's that's true, right? I mean, that's that's what that means. We that's the difference of squares. It breaks down like that. If you're skeptical about that, we could say, well, I'm gonna first outer inner last this guy. When I do my first, I get x squared. My outer gives me plus two. <coughs> my inner gives me minus two x, and my last gives me a minus four. Those guys cancel. I get x squared minus 4. x squared minus 4 is equal to x squared minus 4. Always and forever and always. And so I could say, as a matter of fact, there's any number you plug in will be true. Plug in a 0. You get negative 4, 0, negative 2, and a positive 2 uh, is negative 4. Plug in a 5. 5 squared is 25 minus 4 equals 5 minus 2, 5 plus 2. That gives me a 3 times a 7. 3 times 7 is 21. And hey, lo and behold, 25 minus 4 is 21. It looks like all real numbers are going to work. If I plugged in a pi, pi squared minus four would be the same thing as pi minus two, pi plus two. So it looks like my answer, it looks like my solution is all real numbers. But is that true? What do we, what do we have to do? What have we had to do at the very end of every one of these problems? Check it. We had to check that, the, and what were we checking for in particular? Um, <laughs> have a zero in the denominator. We don't have a zero in the denominator. And this is why I made a big fuss about this earlier, is that we had to go back to the original equation, the original equation, and the way it's written, and see what we can plug in and what we can't plug in, right? And right now, there is one number that I could never plug in for x. What number is that? Negative 2. x cannot equal negative 2, but everything else is fine. Everything, every other number will work. And then, OK, how do we write this in interval notation? 
Um, we think about the real number line. We're saying that we could plug in every real number except for this one number right here. Negative. So you'd have the, the soft bracket negative infinity. Uh-huh. Comma. Negative two soft bracket. Yep. And soft bracket negative two. Okay. Or the union thingy. Yep. Soft bracket negative two. And then infinity. Soft bracket. Soft bracket. And so that is what I would be looking for right there. Say, if I said solve this equation, and you do, and you say, oh, man, it's always true. Like, it's, I love you. Something that's always true for every single real number is called an identity. And, and when we went to our next part right here, we did our work and we found x minus 2x plus 2 on this. I'm sorry, buddy. You got to wait just another minute. We're almost what? done. We're what? almost done. Almost done. This is called an identity because this, <laughs> as written, th I'm sorry. This, as written, is always what? true for every single real number, no exceptions whatsoever. I call that an identity. This is not an identity because there is a number that this does not work for. You cannot plug in negative two. And so if I said solve this equation, this would be your answer right here. You'd say in, x can be any one of these numbers except for that guy right there that you said I don't want. Okay. Good to go? Uh huh. Okay. So, homework. This is section six or chapter six. Chapter six, section six. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to start with five. Five through. 29 odd. And for number 29, it's very similar to what we just did. And it says determine whether or not it's an identity. <laughs> Don't do that, just solve. So every one of these, every single one of these is just solve. And for that last one with number 29, you're probably going to have some kind of interval notation of some sort. So um, uh, we're not doing 30. Then there's two challenge problems I want you to do. That is number 32 and 34. 